Greetings fellow Dragonborn, this is Kato Genesis. This time we go over the most unique armor sets that you can find in the base game of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. If the unique set has several variants, like the Thieves Guild armor sets, I'll be showing you the best of them. Just like the rest of the guides you've likely seen, I'll be showing you what these armor sets can do for you, where you can get them, and the attached quest if there is one. Those being marked with a star. That being said, let's begin, shall we? We'll begin with the armor set that doesn't require a faction quest to obtain, and that is the Falmer armor. In every case, you will see enemy Falmer wearing this, but will not be able to take it for yourself minus the shield and helmet. Fear not, there is a place you can get it. The base armor value of this set without the shield is 65, and with the shield is 93. This heavy armor set is found in the Mesinchaloft Depths. Mesinchaloft is southwest of Dawnstar and east of Ustengrav. Once you make it to the Depths, there is a locked Dwemer gate up a ramp on the right side. Bypass this expert level locked gate, and the path will be clear to obtain the armor. Next in line is the Armor of the Old Gods, a light armor set made popular by the Forsworn. The helmet has a base armor of 12 and increases your magicka by 30 points, the chest piece giving a base armor of 24 and reducing spell costs for destruction spells by 15%, the gauntlets and boots having a base armor of 7 and fortifying damage with bows and sneaking by 20%. This armor can be received after the quest No One Escapes Sidna Mine, the starter quest being the Forsworn Conspiracy, which starts in Markarth as soon as you arrive and witness somebody being murdered. A fellow named Eltris will say you drop a note and will start you on the quest to get framed, arrested, meet somewhat of an underground rebellion, and ultimately end up with a brand new set of the armor of the old gods. Now for the more prominent faction armors, starting with the Guild Master's armor, which is significantly better in every way compared to the standard issue. The Guild Master's hood has 16 armor and gives 20% better prices at vendors. The chest piece gives 38 armor and increases carrying capacity by 50, and the gloves and boots give 11 armor, fortifying lockpick and pickpocket by 35%, making them easier in those respects. This set is given to you through the Rift and Thieves Guild. After completing all of Delvin Mallory's special side quests and the main story of the Thieves Guild questline, speaking to Brynjolf will get you acknowledged as the actual Guild Master. Also, he will point you towards the local fence to get your Thieves Guild armor upgraded in the best possible way. Speaking of the Thieves Guild, if you obtain the Guild Master's armor, there's another set of stealth-based armor you may have obtained already, and that is the Nightingale armor. The magnitude of the enchantments on this armor are the only enchantments on an armor set that are determined by the player's level, giving you the maximum bonus at level 32+, plus, the best of which I will be reading off. The hood has a base armor of 15 and reduces the cost of illusion spells by 17%. The chest gives a base armor of 34 and at max potential increases stamina by 40 points and frost resistance by 50%. The gloves and boots have a base armor of 10, the gloves fortifying lockpick and one-handed by 25% and the boots giving a muffle effect. Through the Thieves Guild quest line, this is given to you during the quest Trinity Restored, inside of Nightingale Hall, located near the Shadow Stone southeast of Riften. These last two armor sets you can obtain from the Dark Brotherhood, both of which are optional but have less powerful variants. So we'll start with the Ancient Shrouded armor. The cowl of this armor has a base armor of 15 and increases damage with bows by 35%. The chest piece has 33 base armor and makes you immune to poison, while the gloves and boots have a base armor of 12, the gloves doubling your sneak attack bonus and the boots providing muffle. During the Dark Brotherhood questline in the quest Breaching Security, an optional objective is killing Gaius Morrow in a major city and planting evidence on him. Doing this successfully, you will get a bonus reward, a token to go see Olava the Feeble in Whiterun. Her reading your destiny will lead you to Deepwood Redoubt, to find an assassin of old that is now deceased, and the ancient shrouded armor will be ripe for the taking. The second unique set you can get from the Dark Brotherhood is more of an outfit since it has no armor value. Worn by that jovial and clearly insane little fellow in the Dark Brotherhood, Cicero's hat will fortify sneak skill by 35%, his clothes giving 20% better prices at vendors and fortifying one-handed by 20%, the gloves and boots giving standard Dark Brotherhood bonuses of double sneak attack damage and muffle. Near the end of the Dark Brotherhood quest, The Cure for Madness, at the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary in Dawnstar, you will have a standoff with the Jester and can kill him for the equipment at that point. If you choose not to kill him, you can gain him as a follower instead, and use a rather complicated way to get the gear from him, involving paralysis, poison, and the perfect touch perk. Or you could settle for the less powerful Jester's outfit at the entrance of the Dawnstar Sanctuary. But the decision, as always, is your own. Well, fellow Dragonborn, that does it for this guide. So now I'm curious, what is your favorite armor set? If you feel like there's a set of unique gear that I missed, you can go ahead and post a comment saying what it is and where to find it. Even if you don't want to comment on either of those things, I love seeing what each of you have to say. If you enjoyed this guide, do whatever you see fit to show that. And for more guides like this, you know what to do. Thank you so much for watching. This is Kato Genesis, and your next adventure awaits.